I'm getting ready to go back. All right. It's, I'm ready. What are you talking about? My white balance is finally right. It finally looks right. Maybe it's a little warm. It's little just warm. because I'm sunburned. <laughs> it's been outside working. Yeah. Yeah. I look, I mean, I'm totally brown. Like yesterday, well, this whole weekend I was out. So, so Scott, who were, you know, Scott is our, is me and Karina, his right hand man. He, um, he's been with us for, gosh, probably 12 years now. Yeah. So we were at this one shoot and it was, uh, Lakeview, Fort Oglethorpe, so like in Chattanooga, um, <laughs> like right on the, um, edge is between right on the border of Georgia, Tennessee. And, um, they're the warriors. So it was kind of an Indian themed day. All of our jokes were Indian themed jokes. And, um, Scott got sunburned, so his and he just turns red. So his name is Running Red Face, right? And so we were had some chocolate in the cooler, and um Karina pulled the Kit Kat out. And she's like, the Kit Kat is what? And he goes, That's your Indian name, the wet Kit Kat. <laughs> how'd she how'd she respond to that? You didn't like that joke? I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I thought wet Kit Kat. They can't be wet. They wouldn't be any good. Right. That was the whole thing. Wet Kit Kat. It was <laughs> no good. That's dumb. It's dumb. What I are you drinking? A really good story. Is it Whiskey Wednesday? What's today? Is it Monday? <laughs> <laughs> Whiskey Wednesday. <laughs> no, it is Monday, and it's uh, it's vodka this time. It's vodka. Well, so yeah, you can't really drink on. I can't drink on the weekends because. It's you work. You know, I, I have to get up at four four thirty at four fifteen Saturday and four forty five Sunday to work and be on hot, hot turf all day long. So drinking is probably not a good idea. God, that's sneaking up on the competition. That's early. That is early. Yeah, it was early. Yeah, those are some early shoots, and then um, so tomorrow I have off basically. Well, I don't have off. I'm not on a shoot. Not on a shoot. See, um. Scott, Brad likes running, running red, red face. face. <laughs> running red face. Yep. And he was, boy, let me tell you. He sent a text uh, this morning. He's like, I, he must have got sun poisoning because he was, it was kind of overcast and he had a tent. Like, I don't even use a tent. Like, he had a tent, but he was, man, when he came in the office, he was, he was orange. He was orange. Oh, man. Yeah, it gets hot out there on that turf. You know, that was another subject. I think I saw in one of the groups um, somebody was talking about, you know, that the heat and the weather. Um, I think it rained on them and the heat like kept it, like made them go. They wanted to go full natural background. They're going to go to back to green screen because of the, the weather issues. And the question was, why did you switch from one to the other? What do you think? What do I you think do, the response you, was? You, you do both. Yeah. You do both. I, I do whatever is available that day instead of fighting it or right. whatever the client, whatever the client's asking for. Right. Um, you know, the, they pay my bills really when, you know, so whatever, whatever they're used to, whatever they like, I, you know, I go with that, but I mean, I will always push for, for natural. I just right. push for that, but I don't, I don't push real hard if it's um if it's just not capable of be, being done and and they're on you know their timing is everything and so if they're letting me be avail if they're letting me av- uh, be part of the team and and be part of team and individuals I, I kind of right. don't fight it you know hmm. um I like the clients I have right now too if I was I think if I if I had tons of work I could I could be pickier you know which I have enough work I don't know that I necessarily want more um but we're always looking for you know, those really, really good, good clients out there. So, you know, I, I still try new ones. Yeah. Well, those of you don't know, Justin won't come out and say it, but he has not only does he have a volume business that he has a thriving real estate headshot family. He's in a small town. So he has to make everything work where, you know, I just do sports because I'm in a city of five and a half million people or whatever it may be. So it's kind of a luxury that I have that Justin doesn't get. I mean, you call it luxury, but you guys work your butts off. I mean, there's yeah. there's no luxury in how hard you work, no matter what you mm-hmm. do. So, um, yeah. I I'm envious of just being able to. I gosh, I think I dream of that. You know, being able to shoot just one thing sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, it would cut down. I don't know that it would cut down on my 
on how much gear I have. Probably because I think I, I don't have the same gear as you, but I have just as much gear as you. Right. But it's different. It's spread out video wise right. all the way. Up. I think you have more cameras. I think you have more expensive cameras and I got more lights. <laughs> and I don't know if that makes a guy yeah. more money. I I would say that, you know, I think it's yeah, you know, and that was another thing, you know, talking about like gear and lighting and that sort of stuff. Yeah. I got a lot of lights, but the thing is, is I have a lot of lights because I have a lot of stations going in right. one day or primarily I'm a two light guy, you know, I'm a main light and a rim light guy. That's it. Right. Right. So sometimes there might be some accent lights in a basketball gym or a volleyball or what have you, but outdoors, I'm a two light guy. Uh, so yeah, but and the thing is, if I want to go indoors and and I use want to use ten lights, I can because when I'm shooting football on two different locations and I have two individual stations and I have you know three or four team station that requires a lot of lights. So Absolutely. when I'm inside, I use a lot of lights because I can. Why not? Right. Well, and that's just it. I mean, you're your main setup thrives off that main and the kicker, right? Like that's, you can make a living on just two lights. You can, you could, if you wanted to. Absolutely. Um, but I think there's, you know, something inside all of us photographers. We always want to try something a little bit extra. We want the picture to be a little bit better. Uh -huh. I've talked about this in the past. I mean, that's why I love what we do because the more, the longer you're a photographer, the harder it gets because mm -hmm. you have many ideas going on in your head and you're trying to make an image better than what you took yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have time, you love to play and love to add more lights. And sometimes that leads into buying more gear. And I think that's a good thing. I, I think there's, there's, positives and negatives to overspending on gear but uh, i'm an overspender on gear for sure because it helps it helps keep me excited you know i i, I some yeah. people need that i'm one of those people if i get a new piece of gear i want to go use You're it right away fired up I mean, it. yeah i'm <laughs> fired up and excited to go get creative right i right. saw you know i saw rose posted a picture you know i i love that she colored the flower that she's using for her dancers. Well, how cool is that? I think, and she did that at home. I think she didn't buy that. She, she got creative and did that at home. So stuff well, like the that. dancer photo, she just posted, I think she had five lights and you know, that seemed excessive to me. But the thing is just seeing what James Quants did that she's kind of following that same model, you know, like all those little, like, and he like used the umbrella here and a softbox there and, you know, beauty dish, you know, like he mixes it up because he does, he wants it to be, have a different look and i don't know what the magic is but it's it works it's different like, yeah. yeah yeah it's different and he posted his little video um on one of the websites uh today you know the game cop and i mean such a cool good dude i'm so glad that he's like i don't know i feel like he's up on some you know high level and he and he's but he's such a normal guy and he enjoys coming down i would say coming down but you know talking to us peons you know. yeah yeah i mean it's kind of like he's a I, I don't know how you you know like we're, we're we're selling you know we're selling really nice hondas and he's selling lexus you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know i guess that's the way it looks but you know i think it's further apart than that even yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah but the thing is you can make really good money selling a honda i'm sure right I mean, <laughs> if we you sell, sell a lot of them lots of, lots of them right he sells yeah. one you know college session he probably makes you know <laughs> Yeah, but you know, it's kind of cool how he's just normal. He's not uh, conceited at all. He'll answer people's questions about the you know his little product and all that sort of stuff. So, okay, yeah. so uh, let's see if I can share my screen. And I'll show you the question that we had. Uh, let's see, share screen. Okay, so this is on Facebook. There, so this is Andre Smith. I don't know Andre, but he said um, he was fully convinced he wanted to go fully to field of play outdoor photography surprise storm heavy rains you, you, nothing fell but um sinking green screen might be so bad um this is 105 degrees on the turf mm -hmm. would love to hear thoughts stories of what made some of you guys go mostly green screen and vice versa that's a freaking awesome image right there yeah i good. mean yeah that's the makeup shoot but boy at, you know, um, I'm really interested in the helmet placement right here. That's what struck me. And I tell you what, I like that helmet placement. I never would have put it out there, but I like it. What do you think about the, that? Uh, the only reason I don't like it is it's is it built for crops? Can you get a five by seven, eight by that 10, looks like that? I mean, he this you looks might. like an eight by ten crop to me. Like it. That's a four I, by I, six. Do you think? Yeah, for sure. 
for sure. You think? Okay, yeah. let's see. But you've got enough headroom and enough side room. I think the crops are all there, so I think it works. Well, let's find out. But I, I mean, I I mean, if it if it works, I love the helmet. I mean, I always do. Would you even overlap it maybe on the toe? Even bring it in a little tighter? No, because I mean, I think that the neat thing about that is is it's showing. Um, it is showing the, the the shoe. I don't know. I just like, especially if the if the helmet actually had a um, had a, a decal on it. You know what I'm saying? Let's see here. Well, now you can put whatever decal you want on it. You just need to shoot shoot a bunch of players in um, in gray, just eighteen percent gray uniforms. You know, so I'm you not do, doing that. I just want I want it straight out of the camera. All right, let's see. All right, Andre. Sorry, uh, Andre. We love your photo. So I don't know if he's just okay. That is okay. Let's look. There's an eight by ten. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, you can get an eight by ten crop out of that. What yeah, else do you want to get out of it? Get a get a five by seven out of that thing right there, just like it sits. Let's see. Oh, so in case y'all don't know this trick. Let's let's go ahead and do. Um, uh, oh, you're you're giving Lightroom advice now. Careful. Yeah, you know, I know. Well, you want a loop deck crop overlay? Where I do I, <laughs> aspect ratios. There we go. So you can see the five by seven. You can get it. It's barely there. That's well, the five I think by seven right there. you got enough room, headroom, and side room on the right. You you can get it in there. Yeah, you but you. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could bring it in like an inch. Like there's not much room right there, right? I mean, just right here. You bring it a little bit, but I just think it kind of looks cool the way they did that. I mean, you usually have the helmet and the trick, but the helmet too is like when you put it in the middle of the stance, it looks like it's on that right foot, but you put it towards the front of the stance. It looks like it's centered, but um, yeah, yeah, it's never in the middle of the athlete. Anyway, you, you're putting it in correlation to with the camera angle. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause he has, um, let's see, you can't really see the catch light. Um, there's definitely some sun in there on the camera camera left right yeah my only my only it's not criticism it's just control on that sunlight i don't like i don't like when it hits the hot spot on the end, end of the nose i don't like that yeah he's got the hot spot there but the the rim light is perfect it it's is balanced nice um just a little yeah a little bit shadow on the nose but the, no, the photo is balanced out. perfect it's perfect yeah. the whites are not blown out it's good it's a great yeah photo. he's got to be shooting two eight because you can't read the um the logo the i think uh, it's f4 the football on. helmet's in focus right zoom in. yeah but the thing is though it might be back on and it might still be on the same plane as the feet you know what i'm saying it might 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 be the same plane you think it's a little bit ahead of his nose absolutely hmm. otherwise he'd be standing over the top of it yeah but the um you see the logo back there is pretty yeah. um Pretty but blurred. Long lens. Long lens F4, I don't know. Blurred, blurred, blurred. I, you think? I don't know. I feel like he's got to be closer. I don't know. I think that's a two eight. We should ask him. Yeah. Well, it's a great image. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, Karina. Karina. Tighter. It's on the cusp. It is. <laughs> it is. Let's see who we got. All right. <laughs> Don, what's, what's this? What's this beard and boat talk about? Who says that? Jonathan Dantes. Oh, <laughs> he knows. Yeah, I mean, I, I I really like that photo though. I think that was a great job. Um, so I, the thing about it is, okay, let's, let's go back to the question. Okay, so he had, um, yeah, that's a fun. That's fun too. Look at that. What a great. Yeah, job I, I love him yelling in the middle of the chair. That's a great yeah. job. Yeah, and like setting that whole thing up, you know, he had to coach him. Too bad he couldn't get him to turn the lights on for you. I mean, you could. Oh turn them yeah, on. yeah, because that that must have been right before the storm. He's talking about. Yeah, yeah, but he did a great job. I love, I love this whole thing right there. You know, even if you, like, you know, you don't have that. Even if there's some mistakes in this, the fact that like he set all that up, I just feel like everybody's gonna buy that photo. It's a great. That's great. Yeah, it's a great photo. So whoever Andre is, Andre, your stuff is really great. So, um, yeah, thanks for. I mean, he posted it, so we're we're critiquing. Okay, 
105 degrees on turf. All right. Well, if I'm going to answer that question, like why we shoot natural and no, there's like a time factor, right? I don't have time to, to do all the green screen stuff. We shoot too much. It's too much. And I want to, you know, be able to, when I come home, upload the photos, quick retouching, and then post it. And it still takes us a week. To yeah. Get I mean, all your time is spent on getting when you get done with green screen all your because you still have all the edit to do you can speak to the green screen i cannot tell me about the time it's just so much it's so much more time later you put you put but you don't do green screen you do white you do last light though same thing well but i'm not opposed to green but yeah i switched to using last light just because um it's less equipment for me to bring i get away with um kind of murder that way i'm I'm a, I'm all about efficiency, and if I can be efficient and have less lights um, on a job and still get a clean look, I'm gonna do that. And so, you know, the, I can I can do green screen with the same amount of lights. I didn't ever before. I used to I used to shoot it with one, two, three, four, five, six lights. I used to run a six light setup for green screen just to make mm-hmm. you know if I if I had the time to do it, I can do it in three lights. Um, I think it looks better with four. Same thing that we were talking about earlier. The reason we end up with lots of lights is because we know what helps make a better picture. So we start right. adding to our, to our craft a little bit and we add equipment pretty soon. You know, you're running, if I'm running six lights for a green screen and I can get away with two on a natural, you know, shoot, I'm, I'm going to choose the two every time. Mm-hmm. But so anyway, so last light, I get away with, you know, three, four lights max, depending on if I want to add fill and how I'm, how I'm running a fill light. But mm-hmm. I like to, I like having the, the even kickers, you know, like a three edge light you got two edge lights and then one one main light three you talking three about for, for green screen or for for last light so i run two in the last light instead of just one a lot of people run you know their main light on one side shoot the short mm-hmm. side the shadow side of the face have them turn towards it and then they have the back kick but i'm turning them evenly all the way through a, a right. progression um so i want that i want that light to be symmetrical on every shot Okay, well, that's interesting because Quantz has a complete different theory. Like, he does not want symmetrical light. What yeah. Well, because well, what he's doing, I don't I don't think his his would look kind of cookie cutter like ours do if he was using symmetrical lighting. Right. I'm using symmetrical lighting because it makes my cutouts. And when I put together the team photos, it makes them look cleaner. Um, mm-hmm. I think if I was using, you know, crazy, you know, uneven lighting sources with different spots here and there it would look great for individual pictures but when it came Mm -hmm. time to put it in the team photo and stuff i think it would start looking a little weird Mm. so interesting yeah i mean um yeah and you know the the heat in atlanta like you don't have the heat that we do the 105 degrees on turf yeah i mean that's not yeah, if I had a choice of air conditioning or 105, I would choose the air conditioning. I'm just like, I so don't, the heat just doesn't. Uh, thankfully, the heat doesn't. But the cold, when I shoot ice hockey, now that gets all over me. But the heat, I can stand the heat. It's no problem. Um, you know, I, like, uh, you know, you're not going to want to hear it, but you know, I work out in the heat. Like, I work out in a hot garage, <laughs> hot on purpose. You know, I want to be able yeah. to simulate the heat. You do it to yourself. I do it to myself. I kick my own ass. Yeah. It's yeah. It's good for you. Yeah, it's good for you. You know? Absolutely. And it also helps when you drink vodka after you don't have to drink that much because you just sweat it so much that <laughs> it's pretty hard. You know? <clears throat> it's good. It's too early to start drinking for me. It's still daylight. Yeah, it's nine o'clock here. I'll be going to bed like in 30 minutes. After we talk, well, you guys had a long weekend though. You were you went through the gamut. You went through rain and heat, didn't you? Last week we had some rain. Um, this week like, you got really lucky. Not a little bit of rain. You had a lot of rain. That picture yeah. Jody sent me. You guys were getting just down. Yeah. yeah, and you know, um, we had a uh, it, it, we had a, we had used that app app called Dark Sky. I don't know if you use that, but. It really is very helpful because it's pretty accurate. So even though we were getting poured on, we knew that we just had to wait it out for 15 minutes, you know, and high yeah. school football, you know, they want to get that program in. So it's kind of like um, you have to get it in. And I was like, all right, coach, we'll stay here till eight o'clock if we have to. If the kids got to keep going in and out, they brought out like 20 umbrellas and people just hung out. There wasn't any like lightning threats. So we just hung out on the, the football field until it was time to go. And then we went. So 
it worked out pretty good. And then uh, this weekend on Saturday, we had cloud cover pretty much the whole day. So that was the hottest shoot we've had the last two years. We were like, okay, you know, you have those shoots that are just infamous, like Etowah. We're like, okay, Etowah is going to be terrible. It's going to be so hot. And we know the pack up like at three or four o'clock in the trailer is just going to mm. be miserable because yeah. you got to walk 80 yards with all the gear. You know what I'm saying? And then when you get in the, the, then you get rewarded by a trailer that's 10 degrees hotter than it is outside. Yeah. So we got lucky with cloud cover. But then yesterday, yesterday we sat up and we had a big, um, I think we had a little over 400 athletes yesterday in a um, rec program. And in the morning we get there, total cloud cover. And we're like, oh, yeah, this is going to be great. And the only way we could shoot was with the athletes facing south. So as you know, if you're facing south, that's pretty much going to be the sun's going to be in your face the entire the whole time. time. Yeah. whole time. But the thing is, is all the other directions, there was there was junk. We had a parking lot behind us. We had baseball fields to the right of us. And then we didn't want to go um, where the kids are facing east because then the sun's going to rise directly in their face. So at least – we had a, you know, a couple hours where uh, the fun, sun wouldn't be directly in their face. And then, um, you know, hour into the shoot. So we set it up, but we brought our scrims and we wanted to make sure, you know, we were ready. And then sure enough, you know, an hour into the shoot, the clouds broke and it was sunny the rest of the day. And, um, you know, the kids were facing south. So we had to have shade because we were shooting literally, we started to shoot at eight and we ended the shoot at 245. So there's no way to put the kids back at the sun because number one, the background's crappy. And number two, the sun is going to move a lot for how many yeah. hours is that? That's almost that's seven hours of shooting. So you're, yeah, have you're moving sun. the scrim like every other team, aren't you? Just incrementally. Yeah. You got to move, move the scrim. Got to mm -hmm. move the scrim. Yeah. So I have a big expensive scrim, the scrim, you know, the whole setup is going to cost. How much is this? Like a thousand dollars, isn't it? No, it's like, it's more it's 600 for the wheels and 450. No, it's not 600 for the wheels. It is like 800 for the wheels. Oh, no. Seven to 800 for the wheels. And then you have a stand that's like a couple hundred dollars. And then a scrim that's $150. And then a boom arm that's $150. A couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a very, it's very expensive shade. Yeah. But it's worth it. Your pictures look I better. Yeah. I think you make your money back on it. Yeah. And then you can use it for other stuff. Hair lights, you know, yeah. I use it for so many things that those wheels and carry the sandbags on the field, just wheel and stuff on and off is awesome. It is nice. Once you, once you figure out you can get a light stand that stays up with wheels on it, Here's how man. Nice it is to move it. I'm good. Dan. Hey, Dan. Uh, Dan Greenville. The yeah. Dan, the man he's uh Greenville, South Carolina photo day, <laughs> photo day. Uh, he works with photo day. Great guy. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, Karina just says we can turn around three to five. Yeah. But the thing is, is like uh, that rec league, 400 athletes, right? So probably six images per athlete. Yeah. So what's that? 2,800 photos. There's a lot of photos at it. Plus team. A photos. lot. And now take that. And if you had to cut all those out, everyone, you can't offer six images though, right? There's no way. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. You offer six per athlete. You can. I don't. I don't know that you get all your monies out of it. I. I've been running three to five, depending on the how right. many kids it is. Yeah. If it's smaller, I'll go five. But that's a lot. But man, you get a lot of options to play with for the team photo when you do that. I think if you were to do a green screen or last whatever you want to call it, if you want to do composite, boy, mm -hmm. you got to watch your numbers. You got to watch your numbers. Your They'll time, get out of control fast. Yeah. Your time and how much you're spending to create each composite. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're rough. getting it down there, though. The M1 chip and the new Pix Nub update and how fast it cuts stuff out now. I mean, they're getting it down to, you know, a couple seconds an image. That's yeah. Flying. I think they'll, and I it think used it'll to be get better and better. 15 to 20 back, you know, just a few years ago. If you were getting, if you were getting 12 to 15 seconds an image, you were, you were doing really blazing. good. Yeah, you were blazing. Hmm. But now you're getting it down to two seconds. That M1 chip's making quick work of them cutouts. And and obviously, Damon Bell with you know sports foot automation and picks up his stuff. He's he works hard on that. He's he's always updating it, and he's just a one man band. So 
but yeah, he's a busy right. man. I'm going to read you a text that I got today from a photographer and he's going to remain nameless, nameless photographer. I'm just going to tell you that this guy is freaking awesome. So he's a great photographer. Let me see. I'm going to read it for you real quick. We'll never know. Cause we don't know his name. Yeah. You we'll just have know. to take your word for it. And don't let me forget to tell you about who came to visit me today. Really excited about that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see here. Um, Okay. Okay. My friend, next town over, who runs photography, I'm not going to name the name of the company. She's a phenomenal photographer and she spoke at an event. Oh, it's a she. she well, the, I know, but the she is not who sent me the message. So it's very confusing. I want to keep it confusing. Yeah. Yeah. She came back and said she was thinking about selling. The photographer was thinking about selling the business. I was shocked, but I understood her husband's going to retire. um, But what she experienced was more than usual amount of people who picked up the camera and are being handed the keys to the kingdom of this class or what what have you. She had a very concerning vibe for the future of volume photography. She was a speaker and was worried about it, right? That's worried about what exactly? Worried about what's happening in the industry? Mm-hmm. Like, is it? That she could go to a, a class, but I mean, I guess you could blame the same thing on me, right? If you go to a class and they'll teach you like how to get into volume photography um yeah i mean it's interesting right like this is the big dilemma i was like um hold on a second all right we got uh let's see let's go let's pause turn and burn shoot upload move on this is kathleen with natural and brian dorinsky saying two 2.8 seconds per image yeah it's pretty that's pretty fast that's moving that's faster than you can edit um, your individual natural stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I don't you know. know, all the time is in setting up the CSV, setting up the folders, making sure that your images are where they're supposed to be. That's, that's all the work. It's right. You know, do you and want to do the work sitting do down or do you want to, yeah. do you want to do the work in the field? What do you want to, you know? Yeah. I mean, you still, you still do the work in the field. I mean, you have to, your lighting has to be, very consistent when you're doing cutouts. Uh, right. There's, you know, there's no doubting that whatsoever, but once you get that down, man, who, yeah, it doesn't change much, you know? So the thing is, okay, going back to the other topic about classes. So I think what his message was, is there's, there were some people at this particular um, class that had never picked up a camera. They were just more business owners who were looking to start a photography company. You know what I'm saying? not photographers looking to improve. So I think Mm -hmm. there's a distinction there, right? Yeah. Because if you have business people looking to start a photography company, that's kind of like a franchise type model. Like, Hey, I'm going to find a photographer and they're going to do this composite thing. And, um, you know, I'm going to go out there and do all the sales and, you know, make the money that way. Compared to like you have a boat right boot camp like my class, we don't have anybody that doesn't know that's not a photographer. Everybody who comes there is a photographer looking to to improve their craft in order to sell more images. So I think that's a little bit – do you think there's a distinction there or am I just being biased because it's my class? You might be being a little biased. I mean I've – Come on. You've been – A little. I I think – no, I think everybody is a photographer that's been there. Don't get me wrong, but – I, I see what they're saying as far as, you know, they don't necessarily think it's fair. Maybe that you're just giving away all the information that somebody's taken years and years to learn hard knocks wise. But, you know, that's that's the world we live in these days. We get information a lot quicker than we used to. Um, and it's frustrating, I think, when you when you think about the past and how, you know, if you've got years into your career, you got 20 mm-hmm. years into 25 years into this business and then you get somebody that has never shot volume and can come in and maybe go to a couple of workshops and go home and start making some money pretty quick. 
Right. right. Uh, um, that's a hard pill to swallow, mm. but you know, that's, they got to do it consistently. It's, it's not, it's not an easy business. I mean, I think people like you make it look easy, but it's mm. not, I mean, but you've already made all the mistakes. So mm. I think it's frustrates other photographers that that information is probably given away for free. And I, I think it's okay. Cause I wouldn't be a photographer if that this world didn't exist the way it does. I would have never had time in my nine to five job to, to learn a different craft, to even be able to leave my old job. If there wasn't information online about, you know, how to do things, you know, there's, yeah, you, that's you interesting. Pretty much, you can pretty much go learn whatever you want, really. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, but you still have to practice and get the reps in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so when I was starting out, there was, you know, everybody's pretty guarded, you know, close to the chest with all their information. And, um, you know, you had to go to a, you know, imaging USA or whatever to kind of get some more details, but still it wasn't like a, a lighting class, you know? Um, so I think that maybe that might've been an advantage because I actually had to take strobes out. And I remember just having two SB 800s, I think with Nikon and just going out to a tennis court and just shooting, you know, for hours and hours, just trying to figure out what the light does in certain positions. And so doing that over and over again and, and failing and having terrible images, you know, I remember I posted one image and I thought it was so great. And somebody just ripped me apart on it. And I was like, they're just an asshole. <laughs> like they, when they were, when they I don't know. Back, like, yeah, you go look at it late years later. Like, oh yeah, they were really right. Uh, you know, having to go through that and being terrible at it and then, you know, teaching yourself to do it. I think there's an advantage, advantage in that. than somebody, you know, just, you know, telling you exactly what to do because what happens when you're at a shoot and, you know, shit goes wrong. And yeah, you, then you don't know how to fix it. You don't know how to fix it. You have been through, you know, you're just following the certain steps and protocols, but you're not really a photographer because, you know, you just be given settings and you have a mat and people can stand on the mat and just, you know, not do anything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you really don't, really don't know. So what happens? Why do we, yeah. I, mean, I just feel like we talk about this every time. Why do we, as constant? Stop it then. Maybe it needs to be said. It has to be said differently in different, different ways before it hits people, you know? So it's right. okay. And, and the okay. thing is, is let's see, let's see. Uh, so Dan is saying spa and that's a, uh, that's a, uh, what is it called? Pig snub? Sports photo automation, pig snub. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing about pig snub is, is he's not even taking any more customers. That I think that, he opened it today for a little bit. Or really? Recently. Yeah. Wow. It's open right now. I mean, he's in a pretty good spot, right? Where he's like, I'm not even taking any new, new business. Yeah. I mean, I I don't know. I, I wish he would keep it. Why? I don't know. I get I get why he does it because his customer service, he wants to stay strong and he doesn't want employees. And so if he takes on too much where he can't get to everybody, I think that bugs him. And so he tries if to If he adds one management. employee, though, he has to get a lot more more in sales right like just one yeah. employee is gonna have to like yeah. really increase his sales i mean at this point who knows i don't know what his books are but it seems like everybody knows who he is and he is he's the best at it i mean so if we if god forbid anything ever happened to damon we'd all be in trouble <laughs> business wise <laughs> yeah right there's nobody else doing what he does that's a that's a pretty sketchy place to be when nobody else knows how to do what he does either I mean, I've never met him. I've never, you know, been great to guy. Him. Yeah. I mean, Super. is he, do you think that eventually he'll sell it? I don't know. I don't think so. I think he's, he likes it. I, 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 I like his, you know, stick it to the man type mentality. So, I mean, I, I'm into that. I like that part of it. But is he doing like, I know I bought, like I bought the spa, I got in, but I don't <laughs> know, like, is it not a monthly fee? It's not a monthly fee, right? It's yearly. Yeah. It's annual. He could go. Okay. So he gets, Okay. Okay. So he has annual. So he gets one. Ooh, boy. That I would think like in December, like whenever those. Well, maybe the subscriptions they just they're all different, or is it all like January one? Well, we. I mean, we got platinum members. We got regular members. I think there's different levels. You know. Look, obviously. I'm platinum. <laughs> so <laughs> we used to have our own Facebook page, but he linked those up. I think he got. It's the same thing. It's just it gets too big. It gets hard to manage. You know. Mm -hmm. there's something yeah. to be said and being able to manage your growth 
in any business. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's fascinating. I feel like there's more composite photographers out there right now than there is natural background, which I'm fine with. I'm totally fine with that. I don't I don't know if it's necessarily easier. I think there's I think there's more work involved in composite than there is in But it's natural. easier on the front end. Yeah. Wait, it's it, easier it, for coaches. It? Yeah, it's easier for coach. I'm um, I don't know. No, I mean, your system is pretty great. Like it doesn't take that long to run a team through. It takes you 10 minutes, you know, to get right. through a team. Same thing with composite. It takes about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, I guess what I mean is like, it's easier because the weather, I guess is the only thing I mean. You don't have to worry about the elements. Yeah. But sometimes you got to worry about, did they give you enough room to set all your lights and your spacing up? You know, that mm -hmm. they like to throw you in a hallway or in a closet. I think we've all been there. I mean, I hate that. You, when you get put in the worst possible spot. Yeah. Happens all the time. Yeah. I have a big football league right now that wants to go um, in a batting cage. And the thing is their photos last year is my first year doing them. Their photos were spectacular. They were so good. I was really proud of them, um, but it did rain. It was raining on and off the whole night, but it almost looked kind of cool. Cause it was kind of a little bit of a mist mist, yeah, you know? Yeah. So the individual photos just were beautiful and I loved them. So they saw some of the stuff we did with uh, James Quantz when we were up at Columbine, and they want to go for that look. So, you know, they say they have a bat indoor batting cage, but I'm like, uh, I mean, it's not how same. how big is it? I mean, it's got to be big. Yeah. If it has it's turf, that'll be good, right? I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, and you could just throw a black backdrop, your flag up, and throw the. Throw the quant lights up and go. The pro light mods. Nah, I think I want to. Uh, I need to get that spandex stuff. Uh, and yeah, just rose brand spandex. I yeah. got the link when you want it. Let yeah, I got to do that. Yeah, I got to do that. So, so yeah, so I'm actually excited about it because oh, but I got to do it this weekend. Uh, this weekend I have a cheer a competition cheer, and they're like, yeah, we got the cafeteria. I was like, oh great, love the cafeteria. <laughs> Sometimes the ceilings are high in those. Usually you'll be all right. Yeah, but you know, I was looking at my turf. I have some. I have a big piece of turf in my studio. Like, well, studio is like warehouse right now. It's probably, dang, I think that thing is at least thirty feet. Thirty feet by fifteen feet. I think I could cut it. I think I'm gonna cut it. Do, do like a fifteen by fifteen. Yeah. Yeah, and then use that fold for it turf. Fold it and throw yeah, it. Yeah, but it's competition cheer. I don't know. Gosh, I don't know if competition cheer wants grass, though. But I guess it's better than a cafeteria better. floor. Yeah, you don't want a white like or a gray floor. Yeah, no. It will be way better to have grass. Hmm. I think sometimes they use AstroTurf on their competition floors, don't they? No, I, I think competition... I don't know. Cheer, I know nothing about it. So Yeah, I don't know what they... like. I don't know if it's like... um. That gymnastic style floor? Don't know. I, I oh. have no idea. I can't speak to it anymore. Let's I already see. lied through my teeth. I have no idea. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cafeteria is, is, is wide open. So that'll be good. So it'll be interesting. Well, yeah. it's just a, it's an ease of use thing, right? For us, for us compositors that know how to do it and have a system and a workflow. For guys that don't, it's it could seem daunting to do all that for sure. But you have just as much work in that cafeteria if you didn't do composite as you would if you did composite. I feel like, hmm. don't you? Where are you taking the team photo? I'm going to try to take it right there. I yeah, mean, where else want to do it? Yeah. You know, I and mean, that's the look they want. Cop use it, yeah. You know, Karina says it to you. Jim, Jim Matt. Matt. Yeah. You no know, Brad says, yeah. So it's that usually that blue, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's blue. But um, so yeah, we'll try it out. We'll see what happens. You know, I mean that's what you'll they, be. I mean, you'll kill it no matter what, but yeah. That's what they want. So I got um some soft boxes from John Scott coming. Um, and I got the quantity. I got I think I have six. Those guys, so I have to get the um, I have to order the background. How have you ordered that spandex before? Yeah, how long it did it take, take to get? I think it's it took like three days, it was fast, it's five, five okay. to seven, I think, but it came fast. I need to order it tomorrow, yeah, unless everybody watching goes and orders it. All our fans, <laughs> yeah, we got 14 of them right now. Do we? Yeah, that's a good number. 
Yeah, that's a good number. We'd go between 14 and 18, yeah. Do you yeah. want that link now in public? What's that? Index? Uh, sure, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I mean, I get um, a lot of questions, too, about gear and stuff. And just, yeah, we'll put it up there. Like, um, let me put it up there. John Scott. There. It's in the comments. There's the spandex. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Hey, look, my face isn't there. Yeah, that looks good. And then um, let me see. Uh, okay. Yeah, John Scott. Check Robert's camera. He's been to a boot camp, and the dude knows. How much does he know about gear? A lot more than we do, probably. Which is good. <laughs> That's his. It's his job. Yeah. So, you know, it's great. I, and he'll tell you like, there's some stuff at B and H that they might have that he doesn't have, just because they're a gigantic company, mm -hmm. and um, you know, he can't you know have everything they have because I think like Matthew stands. He says they buy it by like the you know, the container, like two containers of, you know, Matthew stands. So there's some stuff that, but just the knowledge alone that knows you can call them. Like you're not going to call a BH and h guy and they're going to know what volume photography is all about. They just have no clue. They don't have a clue about what we do. We're very specialized. And so the gear that we use is very specialized. And so I feel like John has a really good grasp on that. I've talked to him for hours and hours and hours. He's been to a boat ride boot camp, so he knows – the entire flow. And he's it's not it's not that he's just a natural backgrounds, right? Like he did everything with us. He did the quants thing. Right. Like he knows exactly what we need. So if you need help on buying gear, that's the guy to call because he's not going to steer you the wrong direction. He's not going to sell you a damn 400 watt light for outdoor use. <laughs> True. That is like, you can't do that. FJ, I mean, and he loves Westcott. Like I think Westcott, I'm talking about the, what is that light called? The, FJ 400? Yeah. Westcott? 400. Yeah. It's not enough for outdoors. I'm just going to tell you right now. It is not enough power for outdoors. <laughs> it is without a shoot. modifier. Without a modifier. If you just have yeah. the reflector on. But, but I'm not you're sure shooting harsh reflector. life. Right, yeah, I'm right. not going to do That's too harsh. You it's just not enough light. You can't and have it be I mean, enough. I mean, you can do it if you're going to put it one inch from their face mm -hmm. in bright sunlight, which, you know, some people want to do, you know. Um, but the way we have set up where we have buddy lights and we have, you know, um, we need some space. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'll show you, I'll show you a perfect example. So, I mean, this is the thing. Okay. We'll get on another set. I mean, did you see, see Quant did you see Quants said he would burst into flames with his skin tone on the 105 <laughs> degree turn? Was that Quants? He did. Yeah. He said that. <laughs> I have to agree with him on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So um, Quant needs to get in here. What did he say? He said he's not he's not available till September. Uh, All right. Let's see here. Uh, just got off the water. Who is that? Do you know who it is? I'm looking. Somebody's on a boat. Joey so obviously, Freeman. Joey, of course, is angry. Joey, it's angry. Joe. Oh, by the way, I know we talked about uh, Trey Love. Uh, last episode um, out of Columbia, South Carolina, he's doing much better. So, oh, I thought he didn't make it. <laughs> that's too soon. Too soon. That's too soon. No, I'm Trey's glad he's doing good. good. Yeah, yeah I texted awesome. him this morning. He's doing good. He said he didn't have to start up like fully, like full going by until September 10th. So hopefully he'll have a little bit of time there. But okay, so I'm going to show you an example. I'm going to show you an example. Let's see, share. Oh, uh, there we go. You don't even know how computers work. I don't know why. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay. So, all right. If you want that photo, you cannot use a 400 watt light. No shot. No shot. So it, this is what we got. We're shooting at shallow depth of field 2.8, right? And, um, we're controlling the light. You can use, use uh, ND filter or you can use high, high speed sync. And that light is far enough away from the subject that you can do a landscape orientation, right? And if you have a 400 watt light 
that light is not going to be, you have to move it so close that there's no way you can get landscape out of it. Right? Without having to Photoshop the light out. Right. Right. And you can't do that with thousands of photos. No, you'd be crazy. Right. So what I'm saying is, is yeah, gear like, okay. So gear was an issue when I started because I couldn't afford to have, you know, that yesterday we had, you know, 10 or 12 lights out there because we had so many lines, team shots, you know, all that stuff. Right. But I rented lights. That's what I did. Every, every weekend I drove down, down, downtown Atlanta and I rented gear that I needed in order to pull the shoot off. Cause I only had enough to do like two lines. Right. I didn't have that many lights. I had like six lights or whatever, or four lights. And so I had to rent gear in order to pull it off. But yeah. as that, you know, year after year, I'd buy a light, two lights. And finally I got to where I wasn't going to the rental house anymore. So, um, yeah, I think you're going to be a pro and you're going to be able to shoot any time of day and make your images consistent that, yeah, you do need certain gear. Yeah. You need certain gear. I mean, I'm sorry. You can, yeah, you can't have one 400 watt FJ 400 and go out there and shoot 400 kids and make it look good from the beginning of the shoot to the end of the shoot. You just can't. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't even attempt it with a 400 watt. No shot. No, you would have to. It'd all be landscape, you know, yeah. or not landscape. I'll be portrait. The light would be in super tight. You probably would have to sacrifice the clouds, right? You're not going to get those those deep blues. Everything's going to be kind of bright Instagram style. It'd be tough, and you could say you could do it with high speed sync, but your batteries wouldn't make it. And you don't have. I mean, if you've used high speed sync, you stuff to get the light so close for it to work. Oh my god. Way. I did high speed sync the other night just because I was like, okay, I, I had some amazing clouds and I was like, okay, I want to get, um, because sometimes with filters, you know, you get a little color, color cast. So I was like, okay, I want this to be super clean. Right. I wanted to do these clouds to be the perfect color. I had so many misfires, so mm. many misfires. It was so frustrating. Like I was getting great shots. They're dancers that are jumping in the air, you know? So I was like, oh, it was so frustrating. I was like, okay, this is why I do not use high speed sync. I think if I did that all the time, I, I would get pro photos. Just from that experience alone, I would buy the pro photos. Yeah, if you're dealing with that. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, they're expensive. You'd buy them until they broke a couple times, and then you'd be pissed. Wait. I thought gear didn't matter. I'll have to do that. <laughs> Love that. Is that Joey? That has to be angry. Joey. It is. It's angry yeah. Joey. Sure. Yeah, it's angry Joey. Yep. Yeah, damn right gear matters. <laughs> and the photographer matters. You have to have the right gear and the right photographer in order to make it work. And the 100%. boat matters. You're not out on the lake in a paddle boat, are you? That's some bitch. Let me tell you something. He took me. <laughs> he has a he's a captain on Lake Michigan. Right? Yeah. Angry Joey. So, yeah, so I didn't know. So I took one of my sons up there to go fishing, salmon fishing for a senior year, you know, and I didn't realize that in Wisconsin, that if you take your kid up there and they're with their parent, they can drink at any age. So it was, we had a black like six, we're, seven years old. Oh yeah. If you're with your parent, they can drink. That can't be true anymore. I'm so they like, funny. the thing is we went to Milwaukee and they're like, do you want to drink? And I was like, like, they just ask you like have a beer. They just ask you for a beer. And I found out that that was a law. Like if they're 18, like they can drink underage as long as they're with their parents. So Crazy. that was awesome. But we went out salmon fishing in Lake Michigan. I was worried that I was going to have um, seasickness because I'd never really been like, you know, it's kind of like a sea, you know, Lake Michigan is huge. And we drove no. to the point no, it's where, not. well, it's not like Astoria. Sorry. You, you live in like the most violent water in, in the world. But anyways, Lake Michigan can get a little, get a little hairy. Yeah, they got Another like story, five, Harry. Five, foot, five foot waves or something, right? Like huge you, ones. You know, can you just make me feel a little better about my story? This is what he does okay, to go, me. Go ahead. Go I ahead. call Justin to make me feel better, <laughs> and he Tell never me. makes me feel better. He makes me feel worse. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your big waves. Tell us. About no, I didn't. I, this is how much of a dumbass I am. Okay. I'm embarrassed that I gave me said this. I of course was having some whiskey on the boat, you know. I had, yeah. had my whiskey. I was so, but I had Dramamine. I was like, I'm gonna have the Dramamine because I think that. Jesus. So I won't. And <laughs> I could not wake up, boy. I was out. I was like, oh, Dramamine makes you tired. 
I thought oh, it just helps you with. <laughs> you're lucky they didn't have to pump your stomach. <laughs> I was sitting there like Jay, you're up. It's time for you to reel one in. I'm like, I can't get up. I can't. I can't move. And then after I was like, ah, I was tired. He's like, yeah, well, you took drink with me and you drank whiskey. I was like, oh. What a great role model for your kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is, yeah, that was right before we went to the army. So. That's funny. I had to show them how it was done. So, yeah, that, did that you was catch, a good trip. Did they catch any fish, though? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, he was a good Joe was a good captain. We had caught some. But the thing is, you got to leave at like at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, they, three o'clock in the morning. It depends on how Ooh. far you got to go to the fishing grounds. But yeah, they like to they leave early. Bite usually a little better in the morning. Yeah, yeah, because the sun rises at like you know it's up north, so well, the you sun rises like five o'clock or whatever, and so. I mean, whatever Oof. time it is, but you don't want to be out there at noon. You want to be limited out and back in because being out in the middle of the open water and the hot, like you think it's hot on AstroTurf. Whew. You get a hundred degree day out on a white boat in the middle of open water. That's it yeah. I went bad there. Like the highest there were, you know, low eighties or whatever. It's beautiful, man. It was Wisconsin on the Wisconsin side of Lake Michigan. Man, mm-hmm. that was, that was nice. That's pretty. That's like, that's like Oregon pretty up there. It is really nice. Next boot camp, maybe after Tampa. Yeah, we'll do one in. Um, in we're gonna do one. Angry he'll, Joey's town. Yeah, we'll do. Well, no, he lives in Min- Minnesota. Oh well, so, don't invite him. We'll just do it wherever his town is. And yeah, do it in him. his town and invite nothing but photographers from Minnesota. All, I mean, all of his competition. Have you seen how many photographers in Minnesota? Like touches like up there. All, all like of them are from Minnesota. Half half of the Facebook groups are all Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's incredible yeah but he's still growing he's doing angry joey's doing good he's growing year after year so he's in good shape sounds like that's it. it 52 it's minutes about nothing <laughs> what was the topic i didn't even look did you put a topic that we're starting the season <laughs> we didn't even talk about it yeah we talked about it we did uh we talked we about did, you oh, we never talked about me yes but, we did talk about you you don't remember? I'm not Korean. I don't treat me like that. But first of all, you you haven't started yet your sports. No, I was gonna I was gonna do cheer this weekend, and it got moved because they didn't get their uniforms. So. Right, right. So you're sitting here complaining, and you have it's even been started nice. Yet. No, it's you're been still nice. doing we're getting real everything estate. caught up. We're still we're just getting everything caught up. This is a nice. Calm before the storm. Don't jinx it. We like it this way. Oh, okay. So, if anybody's not following Mark, he's been he's a boot camper. He's from Los Angeles, retired police he, officer. He's a good writer. Read, oh my god, yeah, he writes this thing called Coffee Chronicles, and he is a unbelievably talented writer. That is like a gift. That is unbelievable how good he can write. Yeah, it's good. I feel like an idiot when I type anything on Facebook because if I know that Mark and Mark and Paul Lee, who's a teacher, are going to read it, I'm like, oh, great. This is going to be bad. Five, five milligrams of THC, then it's really, I mean, I'm just <laughs> incoherent. Jesus. Five milligrams. Yeah. Worthless. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Uh, that, those are the biggest stands I've ever seen for a small town. I, I love that. that. I posted that earlier. Um, that was how a hot people, day. How many people go to that football game? Like, how awesome is that to fill those stands at every high school football game? Well, they said there's just two times a year where the whole thing gets filled. Mm-hmm. And um, it's one of them when they play uh, Cartersville High School, right? Um, and Cartersville High School is who um, – their famous quarterback is who was the kid's name that went to Clemson and like never lost a college game. And he's playing the NFL now. Long hair. I can't believe it. I don't remember his name. Trey Love's gonna kill me. But everybody knows him. He plays football. He's in the NFL right now. Long, you don't know who I'm talking about? The kid like never lost a high school and college game. I forget what his name is, but he played for Clemson and he won a national championship twice. Then what's what NFL. year? 
I, he's yeah. a, this is second year in the NFL. Just DJ. Just type, what's that? I can't say his last name. Is it DJ? No. Just, just, you can just type in like, uh, you know, famous Trev- Trevor, Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence, Trevor yeah. Lawrence. Yeah. 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 So anyways, they play, uh, Cartersville. So Cass is right down the road, probably 15 minutes from that high school. And they said when they play Cartersville, which was Trevor Lawrence's team, um, they've had a, a few NFL guys and, um, he, um, yeah, so they packed the whole, the whole place. It's incredible. It's cool. Great stands. Love that angle too. Yeah. I got to go to one of those games and check that out. Um, but we did, uh, uh, I'm enjoying, I, I really, uh, have been enjoying the, um, the, Look at that. the, the team photos. Holy yeah. cow. Look how big that yeah. photo is. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. There's a couple of little mistakes in there, but this one was kind of hard because um there wasn't any numbers on the seat, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's just it's just such a big like I'm really far away in this, but um, you know, this is right out of the camera right here. But I think <laughs> if you count them, there's like 80 something players in there, and then we got 20 something cheerleaders and you know, however many that coaches that is, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, probably 13 coaches and then trainers. So it's a lot, you know, it's over a hundred people in that photo. Um, so how long did it take to good. set this photo up though? Let's see how, if I got it. And then they're yeah, so far good. away. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it took a while. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's no joke doing this. Well, and this is where, is this where, you know, maybe that composite comes in in handy on a team photo. Is it faster for you to set up a composite station than it is to have a hundred person team photo? Mm, That's a good question. Are the faces bigger? I don't think so. Yeah, they probably are. But the thing is though, is that you're never going to duplicate this photo in, in the stands. Like for me, the whole experience, the coaches love it. You know, this coach was really passionate. It's a cool about, photo. I love yeah, it. I, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. think it's, I don't think it's, I don't think a composite's a better option. I'm just wondering if it's an alternative that works too, you know? Yeah. I think this is an old school coach, though. He was old I love school. It. And he's like, no, nah, he's not doing a composite. 100%. Are you using two 1200s with Magnum reflectors for that, for sure? Yeah. But the, no, I, you know, we did 600s because um, we could, we had to raise, because we had to raise the lights. Um, so high and that's so high that the cord the cord's not long enough yeah so i mean it really I, the lights did next to nothing they filled in the shadows um just a little bit you know um yeah that's what yeah yeah we are a touch but our, the thing is is like this we had to do this um in the afternoon so the kids were staring straight into the sun so i was just hoping that i could throw a little bit of light on them to kind of help the raccoon eyes a little bit you know yeah. um so, I mean, the thing is, is it's far enough away. I, I don't know. I, I was still really happy with the photo, but I'm not sure how great. much. I don't know how much. Um, I, if I had to put the lights, like they had some, um, let's see, if you go back to the um, the individual photos there, let's see, I don't know if we can, we can tell. Let's see if you, if you went back to, let's see, let me know that. You went and you could see, like, you see that little area down here, mm-hmm. like in the middle of the stands. There, there was a little opening, and so we could again. Another reason why having some awesome equipment really helps, right? Um, we were able to put the stands that have the I think they call what they call it the lazy leg or something, the Rocky Mountain leg. I think it's called. Oh, uh, I want, yeah, yeah. You can adjust it. Yeah. You can adjust the legs so that way if you like we couldn't like we have these great big stands where you can, you know, raise up really high, they're very sturdy, but a wide base. So the wide base inside of a stadium is pretty tough because you know it's not balanced. So we were able to go put the kids w- in the middle of the stands using those little areas right there where people come in out, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? They have the little steps up into yeah. the yeah. So we're able to use those and we're able to put them instead of putting them in the front row near the track, we were able to go up to the second section and put the light stands in that, that little, those little openings there. And then use, we use great big stands with boom arms 
So the boom arms were able to, to come out over almost over the kids, just out of the frame of the photos. Cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we weighed them down. We had little, um, we had little sand sandbags with as counterweights and you're able to get some light on the team, which helped a little bit, you know, but there's no way. I mean, imagine if I have FJ 400 with a eight foot light stand, that's not going to do shit. <laughs> It won't even take the shadow. It won't do anything. It won't do anything. But being able to have like some, you know, legit stands that are 40 pounds, you know what I'm saying? And put lights up there with magnum stands and boom them up over the players. That was a pretty awesome option. Yeah, it's cool. Um, No, I think it turned out great. Let's see one more time. Let's see. All right. All right, Mark. Just because I enjoyed the Coffee Chronicles so much. Mark, I'm going to uh, pull it up. So, yeah, this is um, – see, I don't know. Yeah. So there it is there. So there's – you know, we, we made some mistakes on this photo, but we not, can't see it's it. not terrible. Not terrible. You know, a little bit too much spacing, but it's really hard without the numbers to space them just right. And, like, I'm, scream- like I'm screaming at Karina. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you know, I'm screaming at her, and it's kind of hard for her to hear me. So it's – um. You know, I, we gotta get little like little microphones. Yeah, I wish those little Nextel things. Remember those little Nextel too? Yeah, you could use your cell phone too. You have a cell phone. Yeah, that is true. And we can't see the photo. You didn't share your screen. You talked about oh, all that. Oh, it didn't show. Oh, my bad. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So there's some little gaps in there, but you know, overall, the coach is gonna be thrilled. And um, the whole, <clears throat> but the thing is, is the coach. See, so this is, let's see, um, 600s don't do much, even with magnums. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's tough, you know. I think it'll, um, like, we did have one situation where it was kind of overcast, mm-hmm. and so the lights were really impactful. Um, I don't know if I have. Let's see. I don't think this one's been edited at all. But you can see the shadows, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, see but that's totally fixable, easy. And you yeah. see your light coming in over here on the left. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, let me do that. But yeah, okay. so. Easy. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, that's, you know, when we have good. And uh, again, we get. Um, those are cool. Let's turn out. Yeah, those good. are cool. Yeah. So those are banner images. You know, we do try to do a sunset photo for um, the high school teams. And, um, you know. It's you know it, what's great about those is you don't have to do a bunch of all you have to do is put their like get the fonts right, you know. <laughs> yeah, they got to match right. They got to yeah, look well, good with the subject. Yeah, but they love that. Um, but what's great about that is they get to see we can sell those photos and we can also sell, you know the well we we sell them the banners but then we also can sell can sell the sell the photos individually. So yeah, it works out pretty good. No, cool. I'm excited. I'm excited for fall. I'm excited for some pictures. I think the I can't wait to get see busy. some. Yeah, you need to be posting some photos. Oh my, my accent light went off. Yeah, your blue light. It must be time to quit. Yeah. Oh, we over an hour. Oh it's your gosh. fault. You talk too much. I did. I had some vodka, so I was. <laughs> You're chatty, Kathy. <laughs> All right. Next week. Same bat time, same bat place. I don't know. We got to – I think Thursdays are it. People like Thursdays. I don't know. You guys leave a comment on the YouTube page. Let us know what day works best for you guys. Maybe we'll see. Yeah, and you're supposed to have an opening and closing remarks. Oh, I got – what are we going to do with that? You have, to, you have to work on that, please. In all my free time. Remember, you're supposed to shake your beard. <laughs> Makes me laugh every time. <laughs> All right. End this thing. We're done. All right. Next time. Bye.